What's up guys and welcome back to the infamous project today we're going to be wrapping up David's little notch back here and what a journey of snowballs this has become funny enough I have not touched anything drivetrain related here so motor transmission suspension any of like mechanical moving parts I haven't touched it's actually been a snowball of detail and little nitty gritty things. I guess the closest thing to suspension was cutting out the roll cage and helping out there. But as you can see, we've got a couple changes here. Got all of the trunk lined with kill mat, got the base pro hub hooked up, got a brand new Optima in the back and cleaned up some of the wiring in the battery tray. So that's all done. We got all of the interior for the most part installed here there's a couple last minute remaining things you can see sitting down in this box here we got kick panels and things like that so this is a 93 93s came with opal gray opal gray is not smoke gray it's not light titanium gray it's its own color only unique to 93 now there was various shades of gray in here and you can even see the corbeaux that look even worse on camera they're more almost, they look green against the opal. So David's going to have to deal with that at a later date, which is fine. But I ended up having to pretty much re-dye everything in the interior. And then I needed to find parts that the interior didn't have. So being a caged car and having that cage go up along from the B pillar to the A pillar and across the front, he didn't have any of these trim pieces nor did he have a headliner so there's a brand new headliner in the car which actually requires the 91 through 93 style dome light which i do not have david i'm sorry gonna have to try and find one probably on ebay or something like that but interior is pretty much there i think probably the most exciting part of the interior other than seeing everything come together is the new holly dash so we're going to be wrapping up this screen a little bit in this video i want to get the fuel level input wired in and then the turn indicators wired in and everything else actually works and functions as it should so stick around for the video and we're going to get that dialed in i'm just going to go ahead now i'm going and i'm not even going to bother showing you guys installing door sill plates and kick panels and speaker grills that's all stuff you guys have seen me do a million times over so i'm going to get all those little trim tidbits done and i'm probably going to spend more time trying to find the right hardware and screws for things like the rear plastics that are in there but they were in with like one screw only when the car showed up and i only have one piece of interior left to spray and it's this one here this came out of some parts that i had and this is a light titanium gray which just going back to the point of shades and variances like you can see here this is most likely sun damage fade right here the rear seat would have protected where that rear cushion is would have protected the side here and the door sill plate protected this so you know and this has all been cleaned and prepped and wiped down and scuffed and everything else so just goes to show some of these grays how discolored they actually get whatever Ford used in terms of their paint or their dye and their plastics clearly didn't have proper UV protection. So that's, it's a really tough one to overcome. And I feel bad for anybody that's got a gray interior that's 19 different colors or 50 shades of gray is probably the reality. So the medium opal covers real nice. This LMR paint, I've been using the same more uh, adhesion promoter. So um, all that stuff has worked out really nice so far and I've banged some of these plastics around especially trying to get the rear ones in around the roll cage and um, seems pretty durable so I'm happy with that so let's uh, kick in the intro screen that'll give you an idea of what's going on today I'm gonna get those interior pieces wrapped up and then we'll probably get just right into that holy screen and some of the final wiring so we can get that wrapped up and then ultimately I'm hoping to drive this car over to my house um, later and just make sure that everything is working okay and that should be a wrap.
so working along here. Well, actually, I haven't even started working on stuff. Who am I kidding? But need to try and see about, you know, how we're going to do a template for this screen to fit in the back of the bezel here. So what I've done is I've cut a piece of cardboard that is reasonably the size of the screen. And I'm just placing it on the back side of this cover because what I want to do is you see how the cardboard tilts, it's kind of rotating right along here. So I'm gonna mark this off and cut this straight. I'll probably do something similar down along here and same thing on this side. So that way I wanna make sure that we can get that screen as close to the front like so as possible. So I'm gonna start with the sides and then after Done with the sides, then I'm going to cut this guy open and I'm probably probably just going to use my cutoff wheel to be honest with you. So I mark these off, get them straight. We'll go from there. Beautiful, beautiful guys. I got all the black centered out the way that I want and the screen's fitting nice in there. So now I'm gonna go ahead and plastic weld some more plates in. placed in here and I test fit it on the dash from the Celine car there and everything fits the way that it should. Just had to grind this down a little bit here. So I have a main connection point here, 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 and here, and it's, it's rigid. So I am going to plastic weld up a little bit more here and I'll probably chase it with a little bit of epoxy just to make sure that it's not gonna go anywhere. So the only thing here, guys, that is a little tricky is if anything happens to this screen, you know, somebody's going to have some time here. Obviously, you know, I don't want to goop this thing in a way where the screen can never come out. The other option would be to potentially cut this frame. I'm trying to think if there'd be, you know, a nice way where you could actually pull the screen out and be able to service it if you want, because you obviously can't pull it out through the front. You can only pull it out through the back once this is off, but otherwise it fits, it works. I know I'm not the first one to do this. So I'm curious to know how others would have done it. And um, I'm really happy with the way that this turned out. It's centered, it's spaced correctly, and it's gonna look amazing. All right. Yeah, the block looks okay. Let's Pretty much like Lando, I'm not gonna lie. Let's 
hoping it'd be maybe just like a tad dollar. Maybe the next coat, I'll fog it on and we'll get the result that we want here. Yeah, it's actually looking pretty good. The key is to kind of like fog it and mist it pretty far away. And they usually say six to eight inches. I'd recommend almost like 12 to 14 to be honest. I don't know if these are TMI or which door panels these are. But these guys here are super, super flimsy. The delete pockets, they're actually much more rigid. So these guys are actually, there's just one. And what they do is they kind of fold them over each other and staple them down to keep them tight up against the door panel. With those deletes, there's actually two. They're more rigid tabs, almost like the factory one. So you can kind of split them apart. You could staple them if you want. The nice thing about those delete pockets, they're more rigid than this as well. So they actually are going to help these aftermarket door panels maybe have a little bit more um, substance to them than what they are. I've talked about these guys, I think when I was doing the Cali Coupe or something, I didn't end up putting them in the Cali Coupe, but I think I had an extra set or something along those lines. But yeah, nothing beats the factory door panels in terms of quality. So if you guys are looking for an aftermarket solution, try and find something that's used, clean them up, prep them out right, dye them, maybe have somebody recover them. But the quality between the vinyl, the cardboard that's behind them and everything else, it's just, it's not very good guys. So needless to say, the door panels were this color, which this is smoke gray, AKA Presidio gray. If you're talking about SEM color code and you can see, this pretty much matches and that's how far that was. So with the rest of the interior being freshly dyed, I couldn't just let him keep these door panels. He actually said, no man, it's fine, just leave them. Man, putting those freshly dyed armrests up against this, like look at the clash there. So going ahead, prepping these out, gonna have them dyed, get them installed. You can see I put the vapor barrier in and everything else. So when you go this far, just go the extra distance and don't half-ass it. So gonna get one last coat of the medium oval paint on here. And again, this is, so this is LMR's medium opal, probably a custom concoction from SEM, as I've mentioned before. And I'll get that on. This guy will be able to get installed. Everything's gonna match. Been plugging away here, just dying up the last few bits, like some kick panels and everything else, just to make sure that everything matches on this car. And I pulled the headliner out of the box, and you know, I don't know if I'm surprised or thankful or what, but the headliner is actually, so the backing is like a plastic and um, pretty durable. So you're probably not gonna have to ever worry about this deteriorating or anything like that. However, I don't know what it's going to be like trying to fit it into the car, especially with the roll cage. So I've gone ahead and wiped off, you know, the roll cage as much as possible just to eliminate any dirt getting on to the gray fabric here. And we'll see. They say that obviously the installer is supposed to trim this and fitment might vary vehicle to vehicle. But let me see if I can't get it in the car with a decent amount of ease. pretty much in um, obviously you're gonna have to do some trimming 
And that'll allow us to get all our trim pieces on. And actually, in fact, I don't even know if he has that trim piece. So we'll uh, do what we can here. We're gonna have to get him a dome light and run this wiring up through there. I gotta cut that out of a parts car that I have so we can get him up and over, hopefully get him a dome light again. But um, it's looking better with the headliner in and dash, console, door panels coming along. So we're almost there. So we got quite a bit done on David's car today. Uh, door panel on this side was on before I left the other day, but we got the armrest installed, got the seats back in here, and you can see, unfortunately, these Corbeaux are definitely a shade off, and the camera actually makes them even look worse as I'm looking through the lens right now, but it is what it is. I think uh, he might ultimately end up upgrading these at a later date, however, you know what? They're there, you can sit in them, and it doesn't stop you from driving the car. Got the armrest in, driver's side door panel installed, cleaned up all the trunk, and sprayed a little bit of white primer down in here where there's a little bit of surface rust, cleaned all that up. Whoever welded the cage in had all the wiring run on this side, so I pulled everything out from over there, pulled the battery box out, and got all the wiring undone, pulled it all back, routed it all the way that it was supposed to be. So we're gonna let that primer dry up and then that'll all get kill mat, kill matted or celeste or whatever you wanna call it, Silas. There we go right here. This uh, sound deadening and we'll get the JBL Base Pro sub installed. Actually, which reminds me, I gotta get the RCA wires for it. So they're gonna do the trick for this cage car. I'm just gonna make a quick little list now of a few things that I need. I notice that the door handle on the inside of the driver's side door is actually uh, part of the mechanism was cracked and wasn't opening the door from the inside, which we didn't even know that that was a thing because while well, this door wouldn't even really open and close properly the way that it was all jacked up before we fixed it. So I gotta get this handle piece swapped out the rods chilling right here so i'll be able to grab that off the parts car at the house get that bolted on we got the cluster bezel and the holly screen pretty much all good to go there just got to wrap up a couple last little wiring details because i want to grab the input so i can get turn indicators going through the dash so welcome back to the interior of the car and i got a couple of little things that i wanted to do one thing that i noticed is they actually had a convertible style kick panel down on the passenger side here and there is a difference they actually they go up a little bit which was resulting in a gap between the bottom of the kick panel and the carpet you see how this swoops up right here well in a hard top you're gonna have a gap between the carpet in this area hard top kick panels this goes straight across the bottom here so that kind of explains to you guys, if you weren't sure, the difference in a convertible carpet and the difference in a convertible kick panel. So I think I've got one of these at home and needless to say, I'll be replacing this for David because you know you want to have the right shit in the car. So without this, I can't put the door sill plate on that side, but headliner is looking great. You can see no sun visors in this car, just smooth and straight, got the A-pillars installed. So everything is looking pretty good in here. So now I'm moving on to the Holly dash. So I've actually integrated the screen into the cluster cover and you can see it's right wedged up against there. And as mentioned, I know that there's a kit to get this screen mounted dash side utilizing some of these factory brackets however david had already purchased this other mounting plaque so i went ahead and made some tabs plastic welded some stuff together and it's pretty clean 
ultimately if you did need to service and take this guy out um you would have to cut these tabs off so that's the only downfall you know it's one of those things if could have redone it again i'd do it maybe differently but it is what it is and i'm sure david is going to be really happy with the outcome here um, the screen is nice and centered and straight and everything else so now what i'm doing is working on the inputs so here is the wiring that was in here before and you can see they cut in a bunch of stuff and most importantly, I found the fuel level signal wire, which is right here, the yellow with the white trace. And these are the two turn indicators. Now they had custom turn indicators wired in separately. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna pin these guys into the Holly harness. So that way the turn indicators come up in the screen and they're not separate. And I'm gonna clean up some of this wiring and that wiring and all that other good stuff. So I've got some Holly wiring slash pin kit stuff here so you know you get nice pins and color-coded wires so i'm going to be using this stuff on the connector so guys there's tons of videos on how to pin and add stuff in your holly and configure your screen so on and so forth and i have watched them i've watched them because i haven't done this yet all i know is that input number seven um, which i need to validate what the pin numbers are is for the fuel level sending unit and i'm going to be adjusting that directly off of the factory um, gauge. So I'm gonna have to figure out the ohm reading. Um, pinning it is no big deal. It's just how many ohms does it register when the tank is full? Obviously when the tank is empty, that is zero. So uh, there's that guy and then the two 12 volt inputs for the turn signals, gonna get those in there. And that'll pretty much be it because everything else is already pulling the data from the sensors and everything that was connected on the Holly setup on the smaller screen. So I'm gonna go ahead now, do some pinning, do some wiring, and hopefully we'll be able to turn that key forward and we'll see if we can't get um, some of these things like turn signals and everything else wired up. So hang out. Number one, number 22. Pin 21, fuel gauge, pin 22 is one of the turn signals, and pin 30. So that's 25, that's going to be 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. All right, so got all those that we need. Um, you must unlock the connector. Once you unlock it, don't pull on the other wires. When you push it to unlock the connector, take the flat blade screwdriver and push on the single white tab on the bottom of the connector. Push on this. There we go. Make sure we don't pull any of our other wires out. I am going to say, let's make blue the fuel. It's clipped in. And green. Pin 22. Make this guy our left turn indicator. And then pin 30. Red will be our right turn indicator, I guess. There we go. Pins are in. You can see them through here. Click our white tab back down and we're good. All right guys, so here's what we're left for our wiring. And pretty straightforward. This connector is gonna clip into here. That's our main power. Go into the fuse block and then switch 12 volts. 
We have our three inputs that I wired in here for our fuel level sender, left turn signal, right turn signal. And then we have some leftover wires, which I've bundled and just taped up because, well, like I said before, they cut them off of the uh, factory connector and the factory connector is no longer here. So gonna go ahead, route these through, and then hopefully we can plug in the cluster and start looking to configure the uh, fuel sending unit and hopefully get everything um, the left and right turn signal sorted out and hopefully everything works. Our dash on. Menu. Configuration. No. Mesh configuration. So, input seven. Everyone's always like, get the mouse, get the mouse. But honestly, like anybody who has a cell phone would be used to using touchscreen here. So fuel level, and we are gonna do custom ohms, settings. Oh, look at this. Zero, all the way to 100. And I think, or 2000. So I think based on this, I want to say it's probably closer to 200 based on what I read and what he's told me. So let's just do 200 and we will do linearize X, linearize Y. So there's all our values. Half a tank is around 50%. It's 100, right? So we'll do save here. And then input, where's my piece of paper? Input eight and nine. So this we're going to do, hopefully it's, I'm going to have a 50-50 shot at getting this right because I don't know which one I hooked up to which. Um, switch to 12 volts, I believe. And then we'll do right turn and this is switch 12 volts and I think that's okay I think this is okay so I think here menu customize add gauge um, I'm assuming there's going to be a turn turn signal somewhere left turn uh, symbol
probably should do status LED. Add gauge. Right turn. Okay, let's do uh, status LED. Oh yeah, there we go. Move. Boom. Got it. This. Customize. All right guys, so rookie move. I forgot to plug in the hazard switch. And of course your turn signals don't work unless the hazard switch is plugged in. And everything started working while the camera was off. Now the LEDs, I got them backwards. Left is right and right is left. So I'm just gonna go back in here and get this updated. So left turn, I'm actually going to say is right turn. Uh, we got a green turn indicator there that looks great this one we are still red so we'll go into menu customize customize warning be green I think we're good turning left turning right we're all good guys shut this off and you're probably wondering why the climate control is out the climate control is out because well the harness was uh, tucked up and hiding under there so I had to get to it so that is it everything else in this interior is now going back together and we are done